welcome to the first of our London Region webinars. At least we hope that's what's going to happen in a few moments. Um, we plan to hold these on uh, either the third Monday or the fourth Monday of each month from now on. Uh, tonight's presentation is exploring our waterway heritage in, uh, in London Region. And Derek is our London Region um, Heritage Officer. He has given his talk to South London, it was very well received, and he's researched all the listed structures and buildings in the London region area that relate to the waterways. And so the plan tonight um, is that he will show all these structures and um, talk about those and he will run straight through and then we will have questions and answers at the end. It's an absolute privilege uh, to be appointed as the Region Heritage Officer for London and also an added privilege to be uh, a member of the IWA Heritage Advisory Panel. So if I just uh, flick to the next screen here, uh, the panel's come up with a heritage policy where the IWA considers that heritage is a vital aspect of the inland waterways and must be actively preserved for the enjoyment and understanding of present and future generations. So we believe that heritage contributes a positive, positively to the value of the inland waterways, such as visitor experience, economy, education, and regeneration opportunities. So you can see from our list here that we take a holistic view of heritage to include what you can see on the list. And more particularly relevant to what I'd like to show you tonight is, is the bottom line there, the views and the scenery. For, vi for visitors to our waterways, it is the views and the scenery of, uh, that includes our heritage that adds so much to the aesthetic value of our waterways. The view though is wider than buildings and artifacts. It's the total operating waterway system. Think of it as a museum without walls, where the structures and artifacts are in their correct location and where possible working as they should. So I only came uh, a heritage officer early last year. One of my tasks was to actually find out uh, this huge patch of waterways. And uh, here we've got a, a map of a, a digital representation of a navigation chart where uh, every dot on there is a principal navigation feature. So there's about uh, 1,300 dots on the screen there, and they're so close together that you can actually, it's formed a sort of a linear line. And you can see from the, the legend there, this is where our branches are distributed. Using the same map, I thought to myself, okay, uh, let's try and get a, an idea of what kind of waterway features we, we've got on there. So although the dots are overlapping, um, the kind of things that, uh, that I, we can show here are the locks, the wharfs, the, the docks, basins, arms, yards, bridges, tunnels, aqueducts, weirs. You can see there's a lot of weirs over in the Chels Chelmsford area structures, mileposts and junctions and others which would include things like visitor moorings. So these are the kind of totals that, that we come out with in, in our 200 miles of, of waterways. It's not definitive because it's showing principal waterway features. So I'm sure we've got more yards and more basins and docks, etc. So then I thought, okay, um, I know roughly what's in the area now, but what kind, kind of documentation have we got? What heritage do we already know about? And so I turned to the Historic England website and trawled through the region waterways and identified a lot of, uh, a, a lot of sites that were either immediately on the waterways or immediately adjacent. 
Now, Historic England grade their, their listed structures into grades one, two star, and two. And so uh, you can see on the right there the distribution of and, and percentages of, of what is of, around nationally. And we also, uh, that includes schedule monuments. Now, the London region has got all of those. An obvious example of a grade one uh, structure would be the Houses of Parliament. And an, another example of scheduled monuments are the Hanwell flights on the Grand Union. So where are these within the region? So you can see in, in, in a, the list here, the, these are the, the sites that I found, which total up to uh, 435. It's not definitive. This is my first pass of searching for, for heritage structures in the region. And there's obviously going to be many more. So let's have a look at the Chiltern branch. This map here shows the sites where I was able to find photographs for the, uh, for the listed structures. And as you can see, Chiltern uh, starts at Aylesbury on, on the Aylesbury Arm and joins the Grand Union at the Marsworth area and follows itself down to the Rickmansworth area and Stockers Lock is, is, the, is the boundary of between Chiltern and West London. So what I'm showing you here is the grade of, of a structure when it was originally listed and the approximate age. Now I deliberately chose this photograph here because I feel as though it illustrates on how we view uh, today our waterway system or certainly how the public uh, enjoy it. it. It is an amenity and you can see that the, the people dining there have really uh, got the prime position of this pub. But I wonder how many are actually aware that this is a 17th century structure, albeit sort of the timber frames all hidden um, and out of view in, in many cases. And uh, moving on to, uh, to the Aylesbury Arm, the lockkeeper's cottage there. I'm going to be showing you quite a few lockkeeper's cottages because one thing that struck me as I was going through the region was the sheer variety of the lock cottages and there doesn't seem to be any particular company uh, standard. It looks as though they were locally built by, by the local builders. Another lock cottage now on, on the Grand Union. And here we have the locks one and two at the start of the Aylesbury Arm. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only staircase within the London region. A familiar sight to all, uh, particularly if you were watching the, uh, the webinar last week on the uh, Trinkford Reservoirs, Trinkford Pumping Station on the Wendover Arm. Probably very much altered now from its original structures. I believe the, it's lost a story, uh, the height reduced, but it was much taller. And going by the, the date there of, of circa 1810, uh, I'd imagine it was taller to accommodate the beam engines which, which, which would have been in operation at the time. Back on the Grand Union, um, just near the Wendover Arm Junction, a, a toll office. So here's a, a really grand structure for those of you who are into inter industrial archaeology. The uh, canal workshop that would have been in the ownership of the uh, British Waterways Board. More recently, the C Canal River, uh, the CRT, 
but I do believe uh, it's undergoing uh, regeneration in an area. I'm not sure precisely uh, what is going on there. Here we have uh, a former shop and public house. Might surprise people that that's grey too, um, but in its day would have been a very welcome uh, stop off point for work, working boats and their families. Yet another canal cottage. Looks as though this one's been extended. Again, a totally different design, not following any particular pattern. Uh, the window structures there remind me. Uh, of, of a more of a pumping station design. Yet another canal cottage, this time two stories, again following no pattern. And again, totally different. And here we come to cow roast, no, known I'm sure by a lot of you. Uh, it's a very unusual name, and the, the building's now uh, looking quite different uh, than they are today. But here we are uh, at, the, at the summit of the uh, Grand Union. And another lock cottage, again, a different design. Now I wanted to include this bridge as it's uh, a bit more ornate than the uh, uh, the standard kind of bridge that you would see, rather ornamental, uh, got the balustrade above and I wondered to myself, was this built in this style to appease a local landowner? I did look at the old Ordnance Survey maps, but nothing seemed to be particularly obvious that there was any sort of grand estate nearby. Um, but here it is, uh, the bridge that's uh, where the A41 crosses over on the Watford Road, bridge number 162. If anybody knows more about it, it'd be lovely to find out a bit more. A classic example of a roving bridge, really handsome. And always pleased to see a milestone, so really confirms to us that this is the Grand Junction Canal Company. Didn't know that they were manufactured by the London and Lancaster Engineering Company. So if we now uh, go and have a look at the, the Lee and Stort branch, the dots that you can see are, they are the locations of photographs that are found. Uh, and all, all the photographs that you'll be seeing uh, this evening have come from the Geograph uh, website. A rather lovely photograph taken really beautifully uh, in this kind of light. Uh, these gazebos, uh, for those who might not know, are uh, back the high street in the town of Ware. They uh, were the, in the back gardens of the, a series of public houses and were there for the amenity of its customers. Uh, but even today, if you walk down the high street, there are a number of uh, big archways uh, over the buildings, even though there aren't many pubs down there where uh, they would have been where the carriages uh, would have entered the, uh, the, the inn or the pub and would have, would have given access to the stables. It must be unique um, in, in, on, on the whole system, I should think. So here we have a, a grade two star, a fully restored water, water mill. And this area uh, is uh, well known for, uh, for its malting. And uh, you can see from the scale of thing, just what a, a very important industry this is in, in, this, in this particularly local area. Notice here that the, it was listed as early as 1949. Um, the system of listing was 
in, introduced it just after the war in about 1946. And so th this, is, this is quite an early listing. Notice, however, the majority of listings tends to be around during the 1980s. Uh, but the, the sheer scale of, of, this, uh, of these mort houses is really quite considerable. Wonderful to see. A rather handsome house here uh, uh, of uh, the 1700s. And this can be seen in the next photograph. You can see the back there. And what a, a really wonderful view this is. And just coming back to the idea of, of how heritage enhances our uh, appreciation of, of our waterways. So here we are now in the, in the Royden area, another mill. Very, very picturesque part of our, of our region. And what I'd like to point out is, as we go from branch to branch, each particular area has its own characteristic. And so what I hope you will come away with uh, tonight is the sheer diversity that we've actually got across our, our, old, our whole region. Another reminder of the days when uh, the area was, uh, was with the uh, Mortings industry. And something like this, as, as we're cruising down, just enhances our enjoyment of, of the views that are un unfold for us. Here, a very handsome gauging house. Uh, also, the accommodation for the gauge keeper. A lovely form of industrial architecture, and I'm rather surprised that it's uh, only grade two. I thought it uh, could, could be considered for a grade two star. Uh, it is possible to actually up, to apply to, the, to historic England and suggest an upgrade. So here we have our first scheduled monument, uh, the Royal Gunpowder fa Factory at uh, Waltham Abbey. Right, right at the uh, southern uh, extremity of the Lee and Stort branch. So if we move on to the next slide, we now come into West London. So up in the north there near Rickmansworth, uh, that is Stocker's Lock area, coming, following it down to the, towards the Brentford area, and then um, a, one, one or two photographs to look at, at on the Paddington Arm. So here we have Stocker's House and uh, Stocker's Lock is just the other side of the, of the bridge. And notice that this is the residence for the collector of coal dews. Uh, I'll be uh, talking about this in a bit more detail later. So here we have uh, Stocker's Lock with yet another design, albeit somewhat similar, uh, lock cottage. Again, an individual design. So this little handsome collection of timber framed buildings look uh, part, part of a large farm complex. And although the, this particular one is, is the one that is listed, uh, th this is a whole complex and all, all of those buildings that you can see there are listed grade two. Very handsome. So back on the Grand Union Canal, the Grand Junction, built for the Grand Junction Co Canal Company. Um, makes you wonder whether that was uh, the company standard, but uh, as we can already see, there, are, there is a large variety of, of uh, cottages uh, th throughout the whole system. First public house uh, I'm showing you tonight, the General Elliot. 
Uh, looking at the uh, the dating here, it's in the the uh, the back part is early 18th century, and so this would appear to have been on location before the canal was actually constructed. Another pub, can't see the water, so this is uh, the Shovel Inn, um, known, known by many, I'm sure. The Toll House, very similar to, I would imagine, uh, doubled up as, as a uh, lock keeper's cottage. Again, a different design. Another lock cottage. And here we come to uh, the handsome Bulls Bridge. And I expect many of you know this as three bridges where the, uh, the cast iron aqueduct crosses the railway bridge and then a road over the top. The photographer did really well to get in position to be able to see all three. Now this is the, the top lock of the Hanwell flight. And if we look at the next slide, uh, you can see the, the lock cottage there with the bay window. You can see it there on, on the left, um, look, looking in the other direction. Uh, but Hanwell Lock is a scheduled monument. It comprises of uh, seven separate areas and a flight of six locks. And this is uh, on the Heritage at Risk Register. Uh, but rather exciting, excitingly, um, we have made, the IWA have made representations to the CRT for the Hanwell flight uh, to be adopted and uh, in a similar way as the, uh, the, the Northampton flight. And so very exciting times ahead of us. There were plans in place to actually start doing some elementary uh, rest restoration and tidying up and then the, the current crisis uh, got in the way. Uh, so all this planning will just have to be on hold for the moment. We're still on the Hanwell flight. And even though it's on the same flight, the, the lock cottages are still of individual design. This is also on the Hanwell flight. The, the numbers go from 92 to 97. And this is the bottom lock of the Hanwell flight. Rather beautiful uh, structure here. It's very light in structure and uh, again, enhancing our pleasure as we either walk or cruise or cycle or just enjoy the general amenity along our canals. A wonderful structure. Those of you who are familiar with um, the Brentford area, this is the, the Toll House. This did quite recently. And so back on now on the, uh, this would be the Paddington Arm. So although not a water, uh, a canal st structure itself. It is also the, the, the views on either side that, that go a long way to actually enhancing our view. If this was redeveloped, would, what kind of office block might we see on here? So now turning to the North and East London, Just getting my bearings here. So uh, this is showing the Regent's Canal just a little bit west of, of uh, Little Venice uh, in, in, on the west there that includes Paddington Basin, taking us down to Limehouse. And we can see the uh, Limehouse cut and a couple of dots that is the Hartford Union. Further over to the east, the river roading, and then uh, following northwards up the Lee Navigation. 
So just moving to a different branch, just observe how the, the kind of character uh, of, of the area that, that has changed from what we've just been looking at. So circa 1850s, rather handsome uh, row, row of uh, buildings there. And if you were to look at uh, the listings, you might be initially disappointed uh, that if you think you're going to actually learn a bit of history when you, when you go and, and look at a particular site, the, the early listings tended to describe the listed structure in architectural terms. And so here we're, the construction is brown brick with Flemish bonds, uh, etc. Very useful for me at the time when I was making sure I was identifying the correct property, um, but doesn't actually tell you a huge amount about the history. More recent listings do actually go quite a long way uh, in, into telling more about the history and why uh, these listed structures uh, have been applied for. Very handsome building here. Uh, those of you who are into industrial archaeology, I'm sure will appreciate this. Up on the, uh, the, the reservoir areas on, on the Lee Navigation. Strange building, former well station for the Thames Water Authority. And again, for those industrial archaeologists, uh, not sure what the access this is to this uh, building is, this site, um, but it appears here as though it does house a compound beam engine. Here we are back on, in uh, Little Venice and the, the listed structure is the white building there. And just again thinking uh, what it might be like if uh, there, there was a, an office block uh, with all glass panelled, similar to those that, that are on the Paddington Basin, how we'd feel about that if, if that if that was suddenly changed. So now walking along the uh, Regent's Canal here, um, Grey Two Star, and I wonder those people who are crossing the bridge there, I wonder if they actually appreciate that they are actually walking across a grade two star uh, listed structure. Uh, it's just to, the, to most people, I'm sure, will seem just like an, an everyday bridge. So here we are in Camden. Original locks, 18, circa 1818. And in those days when it was listed in 1974, uh, known as the Regent's Canal Information Centre, formerly again as a lockkeeper's cottage, quite a unique design, well known to, to our chairman Libby. Very handsome um, cast iron structure there. Um, this, I believe, uh, the IWA, members of the IWA are uh, making representations to uh, Historic England to upgrade uh, it from grade two to grade two star. Uh, well, uh, well deserved. I'm not sure where it is in the negotiations, but uh, I really hope that they are successful. A different scene uh, in, in this picture, look, looking at the willow trees there. Uh, it looks as though it is about this time of year, uh, but let's hope that there are uh, no people uh, or very, very is people isolating, but who knows? Camden is, is a very popular area. A little gem of a Warfinger's uh, cottage tucked away uh, only to be viewed on shore uh, from the waterside, a lovely private little area. Not quite sure what the, uh, the little trolleys are there for. Uh, if, if anyone can tell me, that would be nice and interesting. And here we have another scheduled monument. Uh, 
would probably be a great surprise uh, to a lot of people. Um, but here you are, Bonner's, Bonner Hall Bridge. So here we are back um, on the Regent's uh, Canal, uh, quite near Little Venice. Nothing to do with the canal, but it can be seen from the from the towpath and uh, and also the uh, from 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 the canal itself. And what wonderful villas these are, and what and how they enhance our appreciation of the local area. But how different that is from where we were just looking at the Lee navigation earlier on. The former British Waterways Board uh, Canal Office. And uh, as you can see, we've, we've got the old uh, CRT logo there. So uh, still, still being used for similar purposes. Alternatively known as uh, Blow Up Bridge. And uh, what a handsome structure this is. The interchange north side of the Grand Union Canal. A real gem. Another lovely little cottage tucked away. I wonder how many people in, in the immediate local area know about this. I'm sure many of you uh, have, have seen this uh, taking shape uh, quite recently listed, 2015. And not quite sure how far, how far away uh, the, these gas holders were removed from. I don't think it's actually very far. Quite a unique structure here, the steam locomotive water point. Uh, been located, uh, but familiar to uh, those members of the St Pancras uh, Cruising Club. You can see the uh, water tower uh, immediately behind here. This lock lockkeeper's cottage seems to have taken on rather uh, of, of a utilitarian kind of look. It is designed as, as a pumping house, but this part of the canal uh, seems to take on a bit of a utilitarian look in its architecture. So here we are uh, in King's Cross, very handsome uh, old granary. In inaccessible uh, tunnel. Again, you can see this did in 1972 how it was listed uh, with a descri description of just how it is constructed. Brown yellow brick, instead of it being in Flemish bonds, we now have it in the good old English bond. But nothing much telling you about the history of the tunnel itself. Again, following this utilitarian type uh, look, Here's an old, old stable block, um, wouldn't have had have asbestos roof in its day, but uh, overall quite utilitarian in looking quite basic. Sim similar kind of architecture, a lock cottage, not really looking at all similar to other ones that we've previously seen. Now this uh, building here uh, backs onto the Lee Cut and as you can see has, has been unoccupied for a long time. In 2015 it exchanged hands with a development company for 4 million and just get the impression that, that with the way it's in such dilapidated form, the vegetation growing out of the brickwork, that it's just being deliberately left to wreck and ruin. Um, but it, we are keeping an eye on it uh, um, to find out uh, what the, the, the future plans are for, for this building. 
so another grey two star structure. So again, I wonder when you think uh, that was uh, from circa 1830s, those who moved into those apartments about 150 years later, I wonder if they appreciate that as they make their way to the shops or to their local station, uh, that they're actually crossing a grey two star structure. So here we are now on the Hartford Union Canal. And these uh, cottages here remind me a little bit of how things look on the Hanwell flight. So built for the Imperial Gaslight and Coke Company. Uh, but looking at the time when it was built is a real surprise because that looks so 19th century, the 20th century rather. So here we are around the Bowback River area. Uh, really surprised that this is only grade two when you see that this uh, is a tidal water uh, mill area with the uh, wheels and driving gear in, inside. Uh, but it was listed a long ago as 1955 and perhaps there were, were different criteria on how things were listed. But on the same site, if we look uh, at a similar type building, this has actually made it, made it to grade one. Very handsome. So a little glimpse of the river roading. And also, again, on the river roading, the, uh, the old granary at Town Quay. So if we now move on to the Chelmsford branch. So here uh, we've got the River Chelmer um, and the Blackwater navigation in the north. And then there, there are sites also on the north bank of the River Thames. So uh, quite a different kind of look here, the whole aesthetic feel. And we're, we're now in the natural river area. Going right back to circa 1700. One of the 12 original locks here. Um, and if we uh, just glance in the background with the blue arrow there, th there's also a, a different era of heritage. One of the many weirs uh, that are on the, on the Chelmer area. Uh, and it looks as though the lock itself is uh, doing, doing the, quite a good job of being a weir as well. So what a real gem. Something, you know, another completely different kind of heritage, but, in, but enhancing our enjoyment of the waterways. For those of you, again, the industrial archeologists, I'm sure this will be a, a, a site of interest. And we're now down right at the, the end of the navigation at the Haybridge Basin. Timber framed cottages. And so you can see the, uh, the, the, the lock basin just in front of you and another lock house. So now move, still in the um, Chelmsford branch, uh, now back on the River Thames. Riverside Station, Tilbury Docks, complete with baggage hall and ticket office. Another scheduled monument, Tilbury Fort, spectacular surviving example of the late 17th century. And on the same site, Grey Two Star, uh, the 
officers barracks just going to flick back to the fort itself uh, forgot to mention you probably also saw it for yourselves it's uh, another scheduled document scheduled monument okay so we're coming now to the London branch uh, which is essentially the the River Thames starting from Teddington in in the west and threading its way through central London around the docks and joining it to the to very nearly to the Queen Elizabeth uh, Dartford crossover bridge which but I do believe the boundary is the uh, the outer limits of the old GLC jurisdiction so the River Thames has got a, a lot of bridges here's uh, Richmond Bridge cast iron five arch bridge grey two star a grade one Richmond Bridge the oldest bridge over the River Thames within Greater London Kew Bridge Kew Railway Bridge Chiswick Bridge, the longest concrete arch bridge spanning the Thames. Barnes Railway Bridge. Hammersmith Bridge, designed by the famous Joseph Bazalgette, our uh, engineer for the, the London sewers. Another Bazalgette bridge, modelled on Rennie's London Bridge. Now this is a bridge I didn't, uh, haven't been aware of, and probably those who um, occasionally might cross the river on on the railway will probably be quite unaware of it. So it's uh, it's. Um, was quite a revelation for me that this bridge existed and one of the earliest Thames rail crossings. Quite a gem. And, but here we have the gem of all on this stretch of the river. Queen Mary Battersea, uh, Battersea Church Road. Um, a beautiful Regency church. Um, Libby, our chairman of the uh, South London uh, sings in the choir there and is very involved with the church. Uh, we had uh, last year had a, a litter picking uh, plastic uh, salvage uh, from the, uh, the shore you can see there. But afterwards, um, I had the privilege of observing a, a wedding in, in the church. And so uh, it was a real, a real privilege and uh, what, a, what a gem that church is. Do go and see it. Just moving on to Battersea Bridge, another Bazalgette uh, creation. Albert Bridge. And just look at uh, how all different all the designs are of these bridges. So we're in, in the suspension uh, bridge area of London. Vauxhall Bridge. Um, take note of the, um, the the interesting sculptures that are uh, on 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 the bridges here, uh, facing in in both directions. Uh, recently, had the privilege to uh, to cruise with the uh, Saint Pancras Cruising Club on the uh, Tideway cruise last year, and got a much better close up uh, of of these sculptures. Uh, Quite, quite, a, quite a gem. Don't know the story behind them. Moving on, quite a similar structure to the previous bridge, Lambeth Bridge. And here's our uh, pride and joy, a grade, grade one uh, listed structure in central London. A lovely wide angle lens used here. Re a real good panorama. 
Customs House, Grade 2 Star, and didn't know this was here, um, the former pump house, engine house, keeper's quarters. Uh, the people you see in the picture are not queuing to see the pump house, they are queuing to get into the Tower of London. And nearby, of course, the wonderful uh, Tower Bridge, another grade one structure. So now we're getting into the, uh, the, the Port of London area, and there's uh, plenty of evidence of how this area uh, was a very important port area for London. So if we scroll through here and uh, look at just a, a few, a handful of these structures here, keeping their, their same, their original names, E, F, G and, and H, warehouses. Make, now making uh, luxury apartments. So great to see um, th this uh, particular structure here has, has got, got a lot of the uh, added features uh, that would have been used in the day for ho hoisting goods into the warehouses. So plenty of heritage to see. Uh, in those days when it was listed, known as British Waterways Customs House, uh, right by Limehouse. Another wonderful large warehouse. And a little gem here for, for those who, who like uh, seeing machinery, turntable and machinery of former Swing Road, Swing Road Bridge. So we're now in uh, the, the Docklands area. And here we are at Greenland Dock. Uh, large and splendid capstan on the west side of Russia Dock. A lovely reminder of uh, how our docks were in use. So we've got seven pairs of cranes still in, in situation here. Thai Gate House. A little gem as we go down towards uh, Greenwich, the Trinity Hospital arms houses, circa 1630s, grey two star. So a bit further down in the Cold Harbour area, rather taken with the description they, they gave here, you can see that it is listed in 2003, so a bit more information. Um, Benjamin Granger Blewett, joiner, mast and block maker. So uh, goes to illustrate here back in those days how uh, the the local industry uh, was, was centered very much around the navigation. Uh, what strikes me is is that uh, if you were on the street level here that would seem a large building but just look at how the office blocks dwarf uh, the buildings behind there. Trinity House, the keepers of all their lighthouses. Lock and Swing Bridge onto the Broadwater Estate, Thamesmead. So now we're in the, the Victoria Dock area. Again, Victoria Dock wonderful old warehouses being put to good use. Nice bit of regeneration. A reminder of the days when uh, Victoria Dock was the centre of grain importation. 
uh, quite an unusual structure. Uh, this, this structure here, though, is on the Heritage at Risk Register. And the famous uh, Crossness uh, pumping stations, Grey 2. Further out into the area where the Thames starting to widen out, giving a sort of a um, estuary feel, a, a uh, coaling jetty. Grade one listed government powder magazine in the Purfley area. So that's a, a, a whistle stop tour of the graded structures that uh, I, I found. I've shown about 35% of out of the total that, that I found on my first pass here. Now, um, what I mentioned earlier on was uh, the coal duties uh, that had to be paid for when coal was imported into the London area. And on the boundaries, uh, of, of this area, which is about uh, a distance of a, a 12 mile circle from the Charing Cross uh, being, being the centre of London. A number of markers uh, to actually depict when you're going over the boundary where the coals will be due. And so uh, the type one is the uh, canal marker. It's um, a granite um, type obelisk. It's about chest height. Um, the Type 2 uh, was used uh, at intersect where the boundary crossed on roads. Uh, it's about a yard high, made in cast iron. It's about eight, in eight, eight inches uh, square, uh, painted white and made of cast iron. The Type 3 below is just like little plates that were inserted into bridges. And of course, railways were obviously another form of transport and the Type 4 were huge uh, stone obelisks uh, about four metres high. Uh, those were the ones that were in commission before 1865. And the somewhat smaller one, uh, but still probably about five foot high, or four to five foot high, uh, is the uh, Type 5. So just to give you an idea of where, where these cold duty markers are, um, you see on the left there the types one, two, three, and four. The the, the blue ones are the type two for for roads, and the the type three, which you can see in the centre of London. You think, so what, what's that doing there? Uh, that's that one is is in one of the London museums. So we're, the, there are now only five um, canal duty markers. Uh, surviving at the moment and if we look at the next slide this just gives you an idea of uh, of where they are on the system so we've got uh, in the northwest on the grand union and lee uh, the river thames south bank of the river thames and slough arm and just going quickly through uh, this one on the lee navigation Rather unusual one uh, on, on the uh, Thames and the, the, the cross there you can see are, are, are the symbols that you would actually see on the, on the white cast iron uh, road uh, markers. South of the River Thames, just hiding there on the left. The south side of the Slough Arm, just by the uh, bridge there. Grand Union Canal. And that's me done. I hope I haven't overrun too much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. And I know you've put a huge amount of work, and I'm sure everybody that's been watching can see that you'll have put a huge amount of work into, into that presentation. We do have a few questions. Um, and um, I'm going to, uh, uh, and a few comments as well. So I'm going to start with one or two of the comments. The um, Markfield Beam Engine and Museum that you showed on the um, in the Lee and Stork branch, Liz Rayner from that branch has said it can be visited in normal times. Okay. Uh, there's a website mbeam.org, and it's really worth really worth going to on steaming days. So that sounds like a, an outing. Good. Thank, thank um, you for answering. 
And um, then uh, the next the next question I have here is a question uh, saying, do you know anything about the dry dock at Bull, Bullsbridge Tesco? Maps show it is early. Many ex-industrial canal docks in London in bad condition with interesting histories. And uh, did, did you know anything about the, um, the Bulls Bridge one? Uh, no, I didn't, but uh, I, I would, would welcome um, some, some dialogue if anyone would like to email me on that one. I think probably the people in West London branch, such as um, uh, Ray and Roger, will um, know quite a bit about that. So um, I'm sure they'll be in touch. Yeah. I mentioned Ray and Roger. I might just tell people that we do have a London, London Planning and Conservation Group. And uh, that's people from all the branches uh, who are, in, have, um, are either planning officers or involved in heritage. And uh, both Derek and I are on that um, group. And we do look very carefully at ensuring that, um, that things are planning applications are in, in line with what we would like and we comment on planning um, applications and Roger uh, still and 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 Ray are both involved in that as well um, there's another comment from a Ray Butler good to see strapping stumps in situ at Bulls Bridge what is being done to safeguard other micro heritage of this sort? Are you able to help on that, uh, Derek? Are you there, Derek? Hello? Hello, yes, I can hear you, Libby. Right, did you, did you get that question? No. Right. Let me go back to it. Um, it was good to see strapping stumps in situ at Bulls Bridge. What is being done to safeguard other micro heritage of this sort? Um, the, the simple question uh, answer though is I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Well, we'll try and find that out, and we noted who's asked the question, and um, doubtless we will be able to let them know. Mm -hmm. The, the region is, is, is a huge area, and, uh, but I, I, I certainly welcome questions like this coming into us. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, now that we've looked at the heritage uh, that we know that it exists, it is this audience that is going to be so valuable to us to actually now start feeding uh, these kind of questions in, into us because uh, you as the audience are our eyes that are out and about and uh, we can't possibly be aware of everything that's going on in the region and so please contact the contact us uh, and, and the relevant people who, who are also on the uh, regional uh, planning and conservation group. Thank you. Um... A comment really from Olivia Corcoran. Nice informative presentation. Disappointed there was not no, no mention of the slough arm, though in fact there was after she'd asked that when we talked about the coal um, the posts. Um, please note heritage work done by the Friends of Slough Canal and then she's given a link which we'll obviously pass on to you. Um, it did make me, I wondered whether the reason, reason that there wasn't much more on the slough arm is that there is very little listed. Is that the case? Uh, that that is is most likely. It was quite a long time ago. It was in the, my early days uh, when I became heritage officer that I actually uh, looked at this. I did trawl down um, visually every, every uh, waterway that's actually within the region. It's either that uh, I didn't find anything at the time or the things that uh, I, the sites that I was showing was where I could also identify photographs uh, for the sites and so th uh, that is what I included tonight uh, so and also to make this um, fit into a, a, about an hour I, I could only actually show about 35% uh, of, 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 of what I found okay um, the uh... 
Oh, I've just lost the one that I was about to ask you. Oh, here we are. Um, Simon Judge says he really likes the holistic view you're taking to heritage, not just structure, but operations and the scenery and view, etc. What do you think are the main threats and risks to preserving this over the next few years? And what could we easily lose if we take our eye off the ball? I think um, where, where the, we can keep our eyes on the ball is actually through uh, our, our planning. Uh, so we, we the, the, the London region uh, now, now has a, 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 a group of planners who, who are regularly looking at the uh, planning applications that are in our area. Uh, but also, also, again, bring, bringing a, attention from our members and feeding it through to us will, will increase our success of, of keeping an eye on things. Hope I've answered the question. I'm sure that uh, you can meet Simon over a pint if he, um, if he has more to ask. That would be good. Um, Oliver Wilkinson had said, what is the advantage to upgrading the listing of a structure, for example, grade two to two star? That's a good question. Um, I, I guess it's, uh, it, it's going to have more weight um, on protecting the structure. Uh, listing doesn't actually ultimately uh, protect the structure from uh, from planning, but uh, the, the higher the grade, uh, the more difficult it is to actually get something passed through the planning authorities. It's also, it's, it's also uh, seems to give more, to me, it gives more, more, more credence to a site. Yeah. Um, Roger Stocker has come back with a comment about um, the dry dock at Bulls Bridge. He says years ago, CR, CNRT's Sam Thomas was talking about bringing the dry dock at Bulls Bridge back into operation. Guess that's been stopped due to the CNRT reorganization. Um, and he expresses disappointed disappointment of seeing it in um, this state. Yeah. Um, there are several people who have said thank you very much for this presentation, and I'm presuming that Alison will be able to um, hang on to those comments. Um, and uh, Colin Adams has asked, is the scope for further collaboration between CNRT and IWA as at, Hand as at Hanwell? I don't know whether you are able to comment on that. Um, just give me the question again. Is the scope for further collaboration between CNRT and IWA as at Hanwell? Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I, I would say that there is. Uh, um, what we've taken on uh, as, as a region at, uh, at Hanwell, we're certainly going to have a, a plen plenty of work on, but uh, I can't see why there, it can't go on in, in another part of the, part of, of the country. Um, it, it, it certainly, just, it started with Northampton, didn't it? And that yes, it did. Possible. So I, I would hope uh, it would be I more mean, possible. I mean, now we, we, we've sort of like started a bit of a trend, haven't we? So as long as uh, as there are the resources uh, to do that, um, then then I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Right. I'm aware of the time, and I don't think. Uh, uh, there is a comment from Tim Lewis to say the first of the mills at Three Mills you showed no longer contained the water wheels, etc. So this is probably why it's grade two rather than the house mill, which still has the water wheels and is grade grade one. Okay. So, Thank you, Tim. Um, so that uh, so there have been some very useful comments. There's a there's a question from Peter Hutchinson, which I'm not sure we're actually in a position to answer. I think it's really a question for CNRT, but you but you may have a, a comment. It says. What controls are there over the type of houseboats allowed on the canals? Between Watford and Rickmansworth on the GU, there are some hideous houseboats, not actually boats, but large rectangular sheds sitting on pontoons. They're completely contrary to heritage. The CLRT vet the design of houseboats. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know whether you do. 
Uh, well, my understanding is 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 that um, that uh, structures like this still actually have to be have to be capable of navigating and moving, and so it strikes me as though uh, that this is where uh, CRT uh, need, needs to probably be a bit more, more on the case. Um, that e even uh, ch chasing uh, th those who, uh, who who don't renew their license seem, seems to be sort of quite a slow process at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah. So wh wh whether CRT, um, although they, it's relatively recent that they um, came into being as, as a charity, uh, still need probably more time to get their, their act in totally in gear. Indeed. Um, there's another really excellent talk. Thank you. Thanks, most interesting. So lots of thanks very much for the presentation. Um, as a comment, which I think relates to the one about the grading, saying from, a, from, an, from an Ian Sesman saying being higher grade also may make it more eligible for certain grants. Okay. So um, I think we really need to bring this, draw this to a close. Um, and um, because uh, we've really sort of run out of time, but thank you for all your questions and any of those that we haven't been able to take. Um, we've, we have actually taken practically all of them. There's one or two that have just come in, which are... Um, uh, so I would like to thank Derek again very much on our behalf uh, for a thoroughly interesting evening. And um, there's still messages coming in saying, saying thank you. So I hope um, that those comments that you've received have been useful for your continued research. and. Um, Thank you everybody else, everybody who's attended this evening and I hope you enjoyed the evening and we'll let you know when the next London Region one will be. Thank you and good night.